Hi, I'm Patsy Rublin. I'm representing the Malden chapter of the Missouri Veterans History Project. I'm here interviewing Floyd Posgrove of Dexter, Missouri, formerly of Campbell, Missouri. Um, it's Wednesday, July 26th. We're at the Boot Hill Youth Museum in Malden, Missouri. Uh, also present is Mitch Green, who's operating the camera. Um, this interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress. Floyd, thanks for being with us. If you could um, give us your full name, date of birth, all that kind okay. of good grace. <coughs> uh, my name is Floyd Paul's Grove. I live at 1011. Uh, no, they want my, um, my, birth, my date of birth is June 21, 1927. Yeah. Great. And did you have uh, brothers and sisters growing up? Oh, yes. Yeah? How many? I had four brothers and four sisters. Four brothers and four sisters. Wow. Um, let's see. So we're here to talk about your military service. Um, which branch were you in? I was in the United States Navy Reserve. Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, how did you end up in the Navy Reserve? Well, I had a brother in the Navy who was in Hawaii, and I had a brother-in-law who was... Uh, in combat uh, on Massachusetts in the South Pacific, and I was going to be drafted anyway, uh, and I had no love for being in the Army, and the Navy suited me fine anyway, so I, I just uh, enlisted. Mm -hmm. uh, I enlisted and before, I was allowed to enlist if I did it before my uh, 18, uh, 18, 24th. 18th birthday. Okay. Yeah, 18th so, birthday. So you're 17 years old? Yeah, I was 17 when I enlisted. Wow. Did you finish high school? Or? Oh, yeah. I graduated from high school and went in the Navy uh, 10 days later. 10 days. <laughs> wow. Uh, the, uh, the high school allowed me to enlist and go take my physical and then come back and finish. Uh, oh, okay. So it was quite an experience. So 10 days later, uh, how did you get where you were going? Did they suit you up? Like I saw, I I always see these these um, pictures where you're all decked out in your. Oh, your, you mean how did I get yeah, to, into the navy? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> they had recruiters that uh, traveled all over southeast Missouri, and uh, he picked me up at Camel, and we went to Kennett, and went to Crothersville, and filled out our papers, and then back to Kennett, and back to Camel. And he gave me a notification to catch a train with a group of people at Poplar Bluff. So we went to uh, uh, St. Louis and uh, down to the barracks uh, where the Army operated. And uh, we stayed in hotels up in, uh, up in uh, St. Louis. But at any rate, I had what they called, uh, well, it was t too much sugar somewhere. Oh. What, what did they call that? It's, it's got a name. And they said if I'd uh, go home and, uh, and uh, uh, clear it up and get a blood test and send it back, well, I can, so I just did that. And then the next time I went to Paul Ruff and caught the train, I took a unit to, to St. Louis, and we went to the federal building and sworn in, and they put us on the train, and we went to Great Lakes. Oh, okay. it's, uh, my stay in Great Lakes, uh, well, it was pretty good. It, it's tough on anybody. It was really tough on anybody because uh, you're not accustomed to... Uh, running and walking and climbing and everything for uh, and marching, you know, for ten hours a day, which is about right. what you did all except Sunday. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, yeah, but it was quite an experience. The only thing I couldn't do was climb the rope. I couldn't climb that rope to the top, and that, uh, <laughs> which is pretty tough. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there were some interesting experiences at uh, at, uh, at Great Lakes. Uh, they. Uh, for one thing, uh, uh, you went out on uh, Lake Michigan uh, in uh, uh, whale boats. Now, a whale boat is a boat that has uh, uh, 14 oars and a coxswain. And uh, they usually put uh, a double crew in there. And, and uh, so you rode a while and then you swapped uh, to somebody else and rode. And unfortunately, my partner wasn't strong enough to over row, so I, <laughs> I done most of the rowing for both crews. But anyhow, uh, this was a great experience because we went there on a, on a high, high day when the, when the waves were high, you know, and they were probably 
six foot, and it was a great experience. You enjoyed that, and then you uh, got rifle training, even though we weren't going. I don't guess we were going to be in combat, but at any rate, you got rifle training there. And then uh, I had uh, I had to stay an additional uh, uh, two weeks. Uh, at that time, uh, normal boot camp was. Uh, uh, eight weeks, and then you got, uh, I think it was 10 days, I'm not sure, coming, you, that included travel and everything, to go home and come back before we shipped out. And that was also, when I got shipped out, that was also an experience, because I was fortunate, I was on a, on a sleeper, you know what I mean, but some of them was in cattle cars, just had, just had things, so it, and we were in the mountains most of the time, so they froze to death, you know what I mean, but at any rate, from Great Lakes uh, to uh, uh, Oakland, California, which is was be the main place that I went, people who would know uh, took um, uh, eight days. It uh, took uh, six days and seven nights. Can you imagine that? Which, was, if you got on a train, you could do it in about two days. Wow! But they didn't have any place to put us. That was the thing. You know what I mean? And. and when I got in, when I got into the training distribution center um, at Camp Shoemaker, uh, everything they had was full, and and they had uh, bunks, uh, five people high in all the armories. You know what I mean? I didn't draw one of those, fortunately. But at any rate, when I was reassigned from there, I, they'd put they had what they call drafts. That's that's what took you out, sent you places. You know. So my name would come up on the draft, and you'd go get your South, South Pacific shots and and uh, all your, and the island gear that which you had to have, you know what I mean. And uh, then uh, when you report the next day to be shipped out, well they scratch it, oh. and they, <laughs> that's what they call <laughs> stop it, you know. Right. And then the next day you'd be out back on again, and you'd go and, you, and you'd sell them. I've already had these shots, and they said, "Where's your papers?" I said, well, I haven't got any papers. And he said, well, okay, you have to take the shots. And I said, you going to give me some papers when I get done? And they said, no, we're not going to give you anything. <laughs> I think I took South Pacific shots three times. But at any rate, then I was reassigned, uh, not in the training distribution center there, but I was reassigned over in the discharge center. And we spent our time in a unit over there that um, we did maintenance and paperwork and uh, uh, all things related to that. And part of our group was shore patrol, uh, not shore patrol. On, you're not shore patrol on a, on a naval station, you're uh, provost marshals. Oh. And uh, part of our group are provost marshals. But at any rate, we stayed there and just worked and the guys come in from the South Pacific and that was kind of interesting. You know, <clears throat> there would be fellas come in <laughs> that had been on ships that were sunk and uh, all they'd have was uh, gear somebody would give them when they drug them up aboard ship or some marine give them to her or something along the line. They just didn't have anything, you know, so they got a complete reissue. That was part of our job to give them the reissue of the thing. But at any rate, uh, uh, we stayed there and then we got everybody discharged and then we discharged ourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, interesting though. I, go ahead. Um, I was just curious. Had you spent a lot of time, you know, at the lake or, or doing anything or at Great were they Lakes? just through, well, before you even went to the Great Lakes, had you? Had I been there before? Yeah, had, had you? Yes, I had at Chicago. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And had you been swimming your whole life or? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. pretty much. All right. Pretty much. Michigan's a pretty big body of water. I've I've been on there when the wa waves get choppy, so I'm just curious yeah, it's about a, that. I never did swim there when it was rough. It was uh, it was, it was reasonably calm most of the time. You know what I mean? It's uh, uh, they had really nice. I don't know if they got nice beaches anymore in Chicago or not, but they, back in those days they had very nice beaches. Oh, and nice. I had spent a whole summer there in Chicago uh, working and. Uh, between my junior and senior year in high school, and so oh, okay. I, I was living with my one of my brothers, and, and we'd gone gone uh, to the lake pretty much on a lot of weekends because it's hot up there like it has been here lately. It was a very right. hot summer when I was right. up there, but anyhow, it uh, it was all right. 
Um, did you get to know any of the guys that you were in boot camp with? Did you serve with any of them later on? Or uh, there was um, there was one, uh, and he and I uh, shipped out from Great Lakes together, and then we ended up in this. Uh, distribution center together. As a matter of fact, he and I got discharged at the same time. Uh, he was from St. Louis, and he and I were good friends. And uh, we came into St. Louis, and I caught the train home and then trained back up there. And he, I, he and I hitchhiked over to Columbia and, and enrolled at the University of Missouri. Uh, and uh, they, but, uh, and then he was there. He and I were there pretty much all the time together, you know what I mean? And so I you was, didn't go home before you went to Columbia? You just, uh, you didn't go home, you just yeah, went right? Yeah, I caught a train down home oh, and then okay. train back to St. Louis, and then he and I hitchhiked oh, over there. Okay. But anyhow, which you, in the Navy, you, you hitchhiked all the time, you right. know? And uh, so, uh, and then another fellow that I was with, part of the time, I was with him in boot camp, but I had, I had ambitions to be a Navy pilot, and uh, they had uh, some little airplanes there at Camel, and, and I'd flown, and, and uh, so they would uh, uh, give you a test, and they'd just have one slot, and there was always this, this fellow from, uh, uh, he wasn't from Greenville, he was up from up there though. And he always made a better score than I did, so he got the assignment. But it didn't do him any good because he ended up in California with me. Yeah. Uh, he had gone. He went to, to the University of Oklahoma, and and he got washed out there just because they had too many. And then he went to the, the naval station at Memphis, and they got washed out there because they had too many. You know what I mean? And he ended up out there with me. He became an attorney. He was a prosecuting attorney, I guess, of Wayne County. I'm not sure. Wow. But he was a really great guy. What was his name? Hmm? What was his name? I can't remember. Oh, okay. can't remember. Um, what What did you do with your time off? Did you oh, guys... we just we just went everywhere. Uh, there was a town close to Camp Shoemaker there named Pleasanton, and they had a racetrack, and uh, they uh, brought good horses in there, and the top jockeys came in there getting ready for the regular racing seating, you know. Okay. So we went there regular, and then uh, we went uh, up and down the course. Uh, I did. I went all the way to Los Angeles. I had a brother down there. And, uh, uh, we just kicked around. Of course, there was a lot of stuff up at Oakland and San Francisco, you know, and okay. just a lot of things for old country boys to see, really. Right. Did you uh, win a lot of money? Oh, no, no, never did win much money. <laughs> I, I, I did on the I did back on the base. Oh, <laughs> was, oh, that sounds was, like a good start. I was a reasonably good uh, three-handed pinochle player and a uh, reasonably good uh, poker player, and, and and you had uh, you played three-card pinochle uh, between paydays, and and then they had uh, uh, regular had regular poker game for a couple of days after. Payday and after, you know what I mean. And I was I was reasonably successful, so I did make money that way. Yeah. But I never did go to any of the. I never did go to like uh, at that time Las Vegas was almost unheard of. But oh, okay. uh, the other the gambling town, uh, the first one, um, Reno. Reno. Reno was well established and an operator, but but uh, I never did go to either one of them. I didn't know how to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, meet any girls or? Oh yeah, there was a there was just a, a nice family over at Pleasanton, a lady and two or three girls and a, and a one that uh, her husband was in the Navy there and she made her live with her. Uh, those people were rather congenial people, you know what I mean? And uh, they had a regular. Uh, I don't know, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been a USO, but it would have been. Uh, Something sponsored for, right. they had dances, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah. But I didn't go too often. I wasn't much into dancing. <laughs> Did the USO ever come and do any, anything? Did you have Bob Hope or any of those people come? Oh my, yes. I, uh, I saw most of the real good bands at that time. Yes, I saw Bob Hope. Oh yeah? And Glenn Miller and, uh, 
uh, several other the name bands in those days. I can't remember who all of them were now. Glenn Miller, that that's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, I saw him and I saw Hope and and there was another one. Um, who was the trombone player? Um. He came, and then now going back to Tommy Dorsey. Yeah, I saw Tommy yeah. Dorsey. Yeah. Sure did. Uh, back to Great Lakes. I, I, the Navy, I, I suppose it was to give us a break or something, but they'd take us off base if it was some kind of a good size event. Now, uh, and uh, like uh, I got to see uh, professional football players, uh, you know, a regular. Uh, I don't guess it was Chicago any, Bears or yeah, well, well, yeah, because Bulldog Turner was the <laughs> was the center. Nobody knows who Bulldog Turner was but me. And uh, then after after I was in California, we had our own football team out there, which was and pitching Paul Christman was the quarterback who, who was from the University of Missouri, and old Crazy Leg Hurts from uh, from uh, Minnesota. He uh, he was a what they call wide receivers now. In those days, they were just in, you know. But at any rate, uh, they were they were pretty they were pretty good about uh, uh, giving you something to to make a break. You know what I mean? Right. Did uh, they have any like baseball teams or anything like that going on? Uh, oh, well, now this was a this football team was professional. They played oh, everybody okay. everywhere, you know. Uh, but yes, uh, you had uh, you had softball teams and baseball teams that were intramural type of things. Oh, okay. You know what I mean. And then uh, one thing that was uh, kind of interesting was, uh, of course, you you know you have the Navy to have Olympic pools, and uh, they'd have swim meets uh, with uh, the Olympic swimmers in them. You know, and oh, wow. uh, uh, that was uh, that was great to watch. Uh, the the Tarzan guy. Was, did he ever come? What was the? There, thank you, Johnny Weissmiller. Uh, Johnny Weissmiller, Tarzan. Uh, let me see. No, I believe that his age would have been past. I don't. I never no? see him okay. compete. Okay. Uh, and, and we had uh, one on our own, own station there that was a uh, was an Olympic swimmer too. Oh, wow. Okay, I can't remember right now any of their uh, any of their names. Huh. But they were, at that time, the next Olympics, uh, the majority of them that came there in those meets uh, uh, did swim in the next Olympics. Right. Whenever right. it was. I don't know what it would have been after 46. But. Okay. Um, when you uh, had people come in to get resupplied that had been in shipwrecks, can, yeah. you, can you tell us any of the stories that they might have shared no, with you? No, not no? really. They... they <laughs> They weren't much into it. I, I can tell you about some of the fellows in my crew. We had uh, uh, we had some signalmen, which uh, everybody in the Navy called them skeevy waivers. <laughs> and uh, we had, uh, uh, then we had, uh, do you know what an armed guard sailor is? No. <clears throat> armed guard sailors were a group uh, of uh, 24 men and uh, two, I believe they had Two officers. They were all gunners. They, they were all gunners, gunnery men, and they rode uh, commercial ships uh, uh, for the protection, you know. <laughs> and we had this one fellow that was a signalman. That had, uh, no, he wasn't. He was a he was a gunner's mate uh, that had been around the world twice and never made it on the same ship. <laughs> they, they, they'd go. They'd go across the Atlantic and through the Suez Canal and then in, down into the ocean down there, you know. And those two-man submarines would say, well, one time he got sunk by a two-man submarine. <laughs> and then the next time uh, he, he got back to the States and they started around again. And they got sunk by a, comics, by a kamikaze pilot. They, he said the hatch was open and, and that sucker hit the hole in the hatch, you know. <laughs> And they went straight down into the bottom of the ship and blew up down there. Of course, oh. blew the bottom out of their ship. And of course, those are all, all those were those old Kaiser tubs, you know, and they wasn't much to them except float, you know, and carry cargo. Wow. But they were they were an interesting group of people. Uh, our bosun mate was uh, uh, who was in charge of our unit uh, was an underwater demolition man, oh, wow. and 
and they were a real tight group of people. His, uh, his commanding officer, uh, who was a lieutenant commander when we first went there, uh, was in charge of the, the Marine Station where they uh, uh, trained the CBs. And uh, he got promoted to commander. <laughs> and he celebrated by bringing a bottle of whiskey over and he and he and his and mate that had been a part of his unit, you know, an underwater demolition, uh, sat in the, in the cabin there and uh, celebrated his promotion, which uh, getting promoted to commander is quite a deal. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, any other, well, if you, when you think about your time there and you just bust out laughing, what's the story that goes behind that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It, I, I tell you what, it, it was just a great group of people, and uh, we got along real well. And then our superior officers were uh, were the best I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, we had a, uh, our personnel officer was uh, was a true German. Uh, he and he, uh, his ambition, and I don't know, he, he had a strange name too. His name was Horshack. Uh, and he, uh, his ambition was to stay in the Navy. And at that time, he was a full lieutenant. Uh, but uh, he was USNR, and he wanted to be USN. What's, oh, okay, reserve. Okay. Yeah, he was reserve, and his commission was reserve, and, and uh, I don't know how he got it. They don't make any, probably as a college graduate and went to an officer training or something. I don't know how he became a lieutenant, which is quite, quite an accomplishment, right. maybe. But at any rate, uh, I was talking to him one day, and he was going to, he was petitioning him to, to take him down a grade and make it permanent in the Navy, you know what I mean? I don't know if he got it done because we were gone before then. But uh, then we had a, a lieutenant commander who was in charge of the provost marshals who kind of run our area there, and, uh, and he was a really good guy. He, uh, uh, they, these people always got out and, and visited with the enlisted men, you know what I mean? Of course, we had lots of we had a lot, lot of facilities on the base. You had bowling alleys and libraries and all sorts of things like that to pass the time of day. Right. Um. So what was his name, your lieutenant commander? Was it, you, you know, know, I don't even remember his don't name. Don't remember? Okay. Uh -uh, I sure don't. Because um, he was only on, over in our place a couple of times, you know, but, I, but I, I knew who he was and what happened because of our bosun mate. You know, I can't even, our bosun mate was, uh, uh, who was the underwater demolition man, uh, he was uh, uh, an engineer. He is a graduate of the University of uh, Pennsylvania. You know, you saw all kinds of thoughts of people. Uh, we had, um, what was that, um, what was that fellow's name? Uh, he was, um, he was an Italian from, from mining company in the East. And he actually, at, the, at like two months before we were going to get discharged, he re-upped for two years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, we took we all, the, all of us that were leaving. We took him uh, up to San Francisco to uh, yeah I can't think of that restaurant that was so famous up there. But we took him up there and fed him everything. But it, he had come from a mining company and he had been in the mines and he said he and his this is a flat statement from him. I'll never go back to the mines and I signed up for this two extra years on account of the G.I. Bill of Rights because I intend to be in college long enough to get out and do something else. Right. If, uh, and, you know, that's a bad day. And you had other fellows that had problems, too. Uh, we had a fellow that was uh, from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. He was, uh, he was a lumberjack. And if he really needed it, when he got paid, he kept $5 because his wife got an allocation and he sent every dime of his pay home to take care of his family, you know. So I, I guess it had, for people like him, I guess it was really tough, you know what I mean? And he was just an outstanding individual. Now I had this one friend, and it's strange, I can show it to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, he and I were good friends. 
And I, you don't, I don't, I don't know where it was lost, but I, I found that out of my stuff from like 1946 or 1947. Uh, now he was a, he was a gunner, and uh, he was on. Um, a merchant ship that went from Sydney to Brisbane. And during the time that, uh, you know, William J. Porter's his name. And while, uh, while he was there in Brisbane, uh, he lived with this lady, and they had a child. So he uh, got a regular uh, call to the, to the um, chaplain's office uh, about every month. Uh, uh, about I don't know whether it was bringing the lady here with the child or but it was related to this young and Bill was from a carpenter family uh, out in Indianapolis and uh, uh, I sent him I sent him Christmas cards and he sent me Christmas cards every year for like three years and then I got his back and I never heard from him again and so it was he was a qualified and able-bodied seaman, and it was always my thought probably that he went back out to the West Coast and uh, signed on to a merchant ship, oh. as naval Bobby said, and probably went to Brisbane and, right. and probably lived there. Of course, he was that kind of guy. You know, right. he was a really, he was a really good fellow. And, right. and, uh, we had another, we had a chief boatswain's mate uh, uh, who uh, had married a girl from New Zealand. And that was where he he was about. He I think he had 28 years in. That's where he was going to retire in New Zealand. Yeah. You just met all kinds of people. It's, it was interesting. You get a good education. Now you had said that um, while you were at the Great Lakes that they trained you to be a a minesweeper, or is uh, that's what, that well, that's what we were going to do. Yes, uh, they changed all they they trained all seamen just alike. But they, they had designators and they were training groups of people to go aboard minesweepers at that time because that, that was what they needed, you know what I mean? They were building these minesweepers and they were going to invade Japan and they, and they had to be, had to have shipboard personnel, you know, and that's where, and that's where we were going to go. Okay. And then the war was over and, okay. and, uh, um, and that's why they had trouble just, you know, doing anything with us. They didn't have any place for us to go then. Right. Were, were you in the military, so you were, you were in the Navy when VE Day, yeah. victory in Europe happened. Yeah. What was it like on base? Oh, it was a celebration. Oh, yeah? Yeah, much of a celebration. How was it announced? I don't remember. Don't remember? Okay. I, the only thing I can remember, I can remember who I was when it was announced. When oh, we were where in were World you? War II. Where were you? Uh, I, was, uh, I was in church. Uh, uh, it was a real cold night, and and it didn't, didn't very many. Me and my dad went to church. I don't think mother mother didn't go. Neither did my sister. I guess my brother-in-law then. Uh, it was the old General Baptist Church, and and all the heat you had was a was a big pot boiler stove down front, you know, and everybody was together around that, and somebody brought the information in that uh, Pearl Harbor had been bombed. Oh, wow, wow, oh wow, that's scary. Um. And so you were in church when you found out that we went to war. Yeah. Where were you when we found out we were no longer at war? I was in Great Lakes. Great Lakes? Okay. Yeah, All right. I was in Great Lakes. Okay. Oh. I was in Great Lakes when they had that uh, blow up with the black sailors at Port, Port Chicago. That was quite a deal. Oh, wow. Yeah, by the way, a friend of mine... Uh, Things change uh, grade-wise and everything. In those days, they had uh, um, commodores. A commodore was not an admiral, but he was not. Uh, uh, he was above a captain, which is the highest grade until you're a general. I mean, until you're an admiral. Now, he was a commodore. Was a holdover from World War One, and he was the uncle of a friend of mine. It's, uh, probably did, and that, that was quite a deal that they had down there in Port Chicago on that deal. Wow. I, I, I guess I'm too young to know what, what Port Chicago was. Uh, 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 Port Chicago was, uh, uh, was a, uh, an ammunition, ammunition uh, station, and uh, uh, that's where they uh, loaded all Pretty much on the west coast, that's about the only place that they loaded all the ammunition and 
explosive and everything went aboard ship. Right. And uh, I don't know what caused it. Uh, oh, it exploded. It blew up, yes. And, and oh. all the personnel there except the officers was black. Oh, wow. And uh, they refused to uh, go back to work. And uh, right. it's quite a hell, uh, quite a hollow blue. You could, uh, you could find it. Uh, right. in the history. A lot of people died. You know, I don't remember. There would have been, had to be some. If you have, if you're handling ammunition, then you, it blows up. Because I never did. I never was in a very big uh, munitions depot, but I've loaded a lot of ammunition. You know, in my day, and and uh, and we fired big guns and everything. You know, and uh, so uh, it's it's always a, a situation <laughs> that that uh, that is a problem. It's, if you handle it all safely and everything is all right, but something went wrong, something was dropped or something that started an explosion in the place. That's why they had explosives already because yeah. that's where they loaded the stuff for ships, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, that's scary. Um, so you mentioned that you went to Columbia after school. Um, was that on the GI Bill? Yes, I went to school on the GI Bill. And how did the GI Bill work? Uh, well, you had to you had to go to the Veterans Administration in St. Louis and uh, um, register. You know, in, enroll. I get, I don't know what you call it, enroll. I don't know what you call it. Okay. But that's what you did. You had to go to St. Louis and get your paperwork done. And then, of course, I don't know how they get into college these days, but you had to have a permit to enroll at the University of Missouri in those days, which you got from your, your high school made arrangements for you to get a permit. And uh, so when actually when you went out there then, you just had to have money in your pocket because uh, they, you didn't handle any money yourself, you know okay. what I mean? Right. And then two or three months later, we got $65 a month. And, uh -huh. It might be two or three months later before, if you ever got started, you got it, you know what I mean? But, okay. And then after I got married, uh, uh, I think I got 105. Maybe. Oh, okay. And uh, you met Peggy in Columbia? Oh, no, 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 no. no. She and I went out together in high school. Oh, okay. So did she write to you when you were... Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Did she ever send you any... Any special presents or anything? I don't remember. <laughs> don't remember. I actually don't remember. You know those things that those memories do kind of pass on. You don't you don't remember a lot of stuff. Did she walk you to the train? Did she take you to the train in Poplar Bluff? No, 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 no. no. A good friend of mine did. That was an my second trip up there was an interesting. You know how they've had the floods recently. <laughs> When I had to be in St. Louis, I mean, in uh, Papa Bluff to catch the train to St. Louis, they had a flood just like that. Really? And a friend of mine, uh, we drove to Kulin and then drove down to Highway 51 to Fisk, and then he drove out to the edge of the water That's on the Highway. opposite direction, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> That's the opposite direction. Well, yeah, but there's the only way you could get there. Oh, wow. Uh, and then he drove me out on Highway 60 as close as he could get to Papa Bluff, and I walked into Papa Bluff on a railroad track. Oh, wow. How many <laughs> miles do you think? I, I don't remember. Wow. It took I was up to it at the time, but <laughs> I, I'd suggest that it. Uh, let me think about that. The water wasn't right there at Fisk because, you know, there's a hill right between Fisk and Papa Bluff. So I, probably when you went over that hill, because that whole bottom, was nothing to hold the water in those days. The bottom right. just filled up and that was the end of it. Right. Wow. Wow. Because <laughs> that was, uh, in wanted... now see, 1945 was when uh, when the levee broke up at Wapapella the first time. Oh, okay. All right. So that was the, the, at the same time? Well, it wouldn't have been much after that because this friend of mine that took me or drove me up there, uh, we had this friend that had this airplane. I told him we'd fly when he was a kid. And uh, he had what you call, a, a, I guess that was a Cub Cadet. But it had it hauled three passengers. And he flew us up there and we flew over. And I saw it want to go over the, that uh, wow. spillway when it went out the first time it went out and washed the road out. Wow. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Of course, I was an adventurer. I'd do about anything. <laughs> it sounds like it. 
Sounds like it. Um, you have any other stories? No, I think yeah. that's it. You have any questions there, Mr. Mitch? Yeah. I've really enjoyed this, Floyd, very <laughs> much. Thank you so much for, for coming and doing this. This yeah. has been, been fantastic. It was fine. Oh, enjoyed it very much. Oh, okay. It's not a real long story, so when you're ready to hear it, we'll just tell it. Go for it. Oh, are you ready? We, okay. We appreciate you coming back. Uh, at that time, uh, as you'd well know, or anybody would know, that uh, uh, individuals who were black uh, were second-class sailors. And they, um, uh, just like the one, all those I was telling you, was out of Port Chicago. They were just second-class sailors. They didn't have any say about anything. And I don't, I, I don't know whether Truman, I don't know whether they, I don't know who ordered uh, that they train black into black sailors with white sailors. But at any rate, the first ones that were assigned were assigned to my boot camp company. And as I recall, there was eight of them. And they were from, from a very wide background. One of them was a Philadelphia lawyer. Uh, one of them was a a cab driver or a truck driver or, or something to that effect out of Milwaukee. And <laughs> then there was one, I guess they drudged up off the streets in Chicago, I don't know. <laughs> but but he was the interesting one. Uh, uh, he'd run off and dig under the fence and go to Chicago. And, and I suppose he, he maybe had a record before he came with us, I don't know, but they'd go get that duck sucker and bring him back. And the first time he got a chance, he'd run off and go under the fence and go back to Chicago. And he'd done it in, in the eight weeks we were there, he'd done it at least three times, maybe four. Uh, and, uh, but anyhow, uh, this uh, this Philadelphia lawyer uh, rode herd on uh, those black because this uh, this black uh, fellow from uh, uh, Milwaukee was uh, quite a boisterous uh, troublemaker and, and this old boy, this this lawyer just set him down and and yeah. read him a riot act and tell, and I can recall one time he told him he said I've spent my life trying to upgrade black people and get things better for them and said people like you don't do anything but tear it down you know he was he was very but they were in the main a good, good group of people you know and they caused us any trouble and yeah. uh, and we didn't cause them any trouble because it, and me i was i I'd, I'd never known very many black people but uh, there'd never been a problem they, my sister lived in crothersville and, and uh they had a lot i knew people down there that were black you know i saw it wasn't, it wasn't any problem at all, but that was an interesting experience, that's for sure. Well, you know, that surprises me that there wasn't, you know, you hear stories about how much trouble there was when, when things were integrated and that it seems to have had a, well, a fairly smooth you know, there transition. Well, uh, there, there was, a, uh, there was a, uh, some problems. I, uh, when I was at Camp Shoemaker, um, uh, our, ho our housing quarters uh, had plenty of space, and, uh, and, a, and a black uh, sailor moved in with us, and he was so uncomfortable that he moved out. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't recall anybody ever doing anything to him or anything, but he just he just wasn't comfortable with us, and mm -hmm. and he moved back. I don't know what what quarters he went to, or if he found a place where did anybody live but him. Or I don't know what happened to him, but I do know that he, he was a very uncomfortable individual. Okay. And, and he, was, he was all right. There wasn't anything wrong yeah. with him. Yeah. Okay. But that takes care of the black people for me. Okay. I, I just, uh, I, had, yeah, I would never have thought that if you hadn't told me about, uh, you talked about right. the waves and stuff, you know. Yeah. There wasn't many of those around in those days. Okay. I was just curious, we had, uh, um, a conversation with a Vietnam vet who talked about a wave that that helped him fly in. Yeah. Um, so I just was yeah. curious. So. You know, I had a, that that first uh, bunch that was in Korea before there was war. But I had a very good friend there that was a was a medic, and he told me, he told me he said I just can't imagine being over there fighting a war. He said it was bad enough. Of uh, course, he brought, brought one of those mass units, you know, oh, wow. and in Korea, 
And, but he was back in the United States before the war started, you know. And he said he, said he couldn't imagine, being as bad as it was in Korea to live, he couldn't imagine how bad it was when Uh-oh. they were having a war, you know. Yeah. That, that takes care of it. All right. Well, thank you, Floyd. <laughs>